Welcome back to Los Angeles. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. Day three of theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con North America 2020. We've been having some great com live conversations in the last three days with actual guests on set. We're very pleased to welcome, to for the first time to our program, Shimon Ben David, the CTO of Weka. Welcome. Hey, nice to be here. Nice to be here. Great to be at an in-person event, isn't it? No, it's awesome. They've it's, done a great job people, with this. Uh, walking I see you're green. You're green like we're green. Fully green. Which is fantastic. I'm actually purple in heart, wake up, but <laughs> fully green, yeah. Good to know. Green means you're shaking hands and, and maybe the occasional hug. So talk to us about Weka, what's going on. We'll kind of dig into what you guys are doing with Kubernetes, but give us the, that overview of what's going on at Weka IO. Okay, so Weka has been around for several years already. Uh, we actually GA'd our product in 2016, so it's been out there. Uh, actually, eight of the Fortune 50 are using Weka. Um, for those of you that don't know Weka, by the way, we're a fully software defined parallel file system, cloud native. I know it's a mouthful and it's buzzword compliant, but we, we actually baked all of that into the product from day one because we did other storage companies in the past and we actually wanted to take the best of all worlds and put that into one storage that is, is not another me too, it's not another compromise. So we built the, the, the environment, we built Weka to actually accommodate for upcoming technologies. So we identified also that cloud technology is upcoming, network actually exploded in a good way, one gig, 10 gig, 100 gig, 200 gig came out. So we knew that that's going to be a trend. And also cloud, we saw cloud being utilized more and more and we kind of like bet that b being able to be uh, a parallel file system for the cloud would be amazing and, and it does. How are you not a me too? Tell me, tell us that when you're talking ah. with customers, what are the like the top three things that really differentiate Weka? Speed, scale and simplicity. Speed, scale so and simplicity, I like speed, how fast you said that. Like Weka. So speed, <clears throat> sorry, you see a lot of file system, a lot of storage environments that are very um, throughput oriented. So speed, how many gigabytes can you do? To be honest, a lot of storage environments are saying we can do that and that many gigabytes. When we designed Weka, actually, we wanted to provide an environment that would actually be faster than your local NVMe on your local server. Because that's what we see our actually customers using for performance. They're copying the data for their local, to their local NVMe's and process it. Uh, we created an environment that is actually throughput oriented, IOPS oriented, latency sensitive, and metadata performance. So it's kind of like the best of all worlds. And it's just, not just a claim, we actually showed it in many benchmarks, uh, top 500 uh, supercomputing centers. Um, can talk for hours about performance, but that's performance. Uh, scalability, we actually are able to scale uh, and we did show that we, we scaled to mul multiple petabytes. We actually uh, took some projects from scale-out NAS appliances that actually got to their limit of their scale-out, and we, we just continued from there. Double-digit, triple-digit petabytes upcoming, um, and also scale is also how many clients can you service at once. So it's not only how much capacity, but also how, how many clients can you, can you work with co concurrently. And simplicity, all of that, we, we from the initial design points were, let's make something that is usable by users and not like, so my mother can really use it, right? And so we have a very simple, intuitive uh, user interface, but it's also API driven, so you can automate around it. So simplicity, speed, and scale. Love it. So Shimon, it's interesting you said that um, your company was founded in 2016, in that, in that time period, um, because- a, a bit uh, before GA'd. GA, GA 2016. <laughs> Um, but but in those in in those surrounding years, uh, there were a lot of companies that were coming out at sort of the tail end of the legacy storage world, yeah. trying to just cannibalize that business. You came out looking into the future. Um, where are we in that future now? Because you could argue that you guys maybe started a little early. You could have taken a couple of years off and waited for uh, for uh -huh. for the wave in the world of containerization as an example to come through. But this is really, this is like your time to shine, isn't it? Exactly, and, and being fully software defined, we can always um, adapt and we're always adapting. So we bet on new technologies, networking, flash environments, and these keep, just keep on going and improving, right? Uh, when we went out, we were like in 10 gig environments with SSDs, but we already knew that we're going to go to 100 and we also designed already for NVMEs. So kind of like hardware com constantly improved. Uh, CPUs, for example, the new Intel CPUs, the new AMD CPUs, we just accommodated for them because being software defined means that we actually bypass most of their inner workings and do things ourselves. So that's awesome. And then the cloud environment is growing massively. 
and containers. We see containers now in everyday uh, use cases where initially it was maybe VMs, maybe bare metal, but now everything is containerized and we're actually starting to see more and more Kubernetes orchestrated environment uh, coming out as well. I still have a feeling that this is still a bit of dev property. Hey, I'm, the, I'm a developer, I'm a DevOps engineer, I'm gonna do it. Uh, and it's, there, there is, I actually saw a lot of exciting things here, um, taking it to the next level, to the IT environment. So um, that's where we'll, we'll sh show benefit as well. So talk about how Kubernetes users are, are working with Weka. What, is, what superpower does that give them? So um, I think if you look at the current storage solutions that you have for Kubernetes, um, they're interesting, but they're, they're more of like the, let's take what we have today and plug it in, right? Um, so Weka has, has a CSI uh, plugin, so it's easy to integrate and work with. Uh, but also when you look at it, um, Block is still being used in, in Kubernetes environments that I'm familiar with. Block was still being used for high performance, so I, I, I used uh, PVs and PVCs to manage my pods uh, claims, and then uh, but then I mounted them as read-write once, right? Because I couldn't share them. And then if a pod failed, I had to reclaim the, the PVC and, and connect it to multiple environments because I wanted block storage because it's fast. And then NFS environments was were used as read-write many uh, to be a shared environment, but low performance. So by being able to say, hey, we now have an environment that is fully Kubernetes integrated and it provides all of the performance aspects that you need. You don't need to choose, just run your fleet of pods, your cluster of pods, read, write many. You don't need to, to manage old reclamations just to create new pods. Uh, you get the best of all worlds, ease, ease of use and also uh, the performance. Additionally, because there's always more, right? Um, we, we now see more and more uh, cloud environments, right? So, Weka also has the ability, and I didn't focus on that, but it's, it's really uh, amazing. It has the ability to move data around between different environments. So imagine, and we see that, imagine on-prem environments uh, that are now using Weka. You're in the terabytes or petabyte scale. Obviously you can copy an R-Sync and R-Clone, right? But nobody really does it because it doesn't work for these capacities. So Weka has the ability to say, hey, I can move data around between different environments. So create more copies or, or simply um, burst. So we see customers that are working on-prem throwing data to the cloud. We see customers working on the cloud. Um, and, uh, and then we actually now see customers starting to bridge the gap because cloud bursting is, is again, is a very nice buzzword. We see some customers exploring it. We don't really see customers doing it at the moment, but the customers that are exploring it are exploring uh, throwing the compute out to the cloud using the Kubernetes cluster and throwing the data to the cloud using the Weka cluster. So there's, and, and one last thing, because that's another interesting use case, Weka can be run converged on the same Kubernetes cluster. So there is no need to have even, an, it's, so in an essence, it's a zero footprint storage. You don't need to even add more servers. So I don't need to buy a box and connect my cluster to that box. I just run it on the same servers. And if I want more compute nodes, I add more nodes and I'll add more storage by doing that. So it's that simple. So I was just looking at the website and see that Waka was just, this was just announced last week, a visionary in the Gartner MQ for, what's the MQ for? Distributed file systems and object storage. Exactly. Talk to me, talk, talk to us about that. What does that distinction mean for the company? And how does the voice of the customer validate that? Great, so actually this is interesting. This is a culmination of a lot of hard work that all of the team did writing the product and all of the customers by adopting the, the product because it was, in order to get to that, I know if, don't know if anybody is familiar with, with the criteria, but you need to have a large footprint, a distinguished footprint worldwide. So we worked hard on getting that and we see that. Uh, and we see that in multiple markets, by the way. Um, financials, we see a massive amounts of AI ML projects, containerized, Kubernetes um, orchestrated. Um, so getting to that was a huge achievement. Um, you could see other storage devices not being there because not, not every storage appliance is, is a parallel file system. Usually I think uh, when you look at parallel file systems, you, you, you attribute complexity and I need an army of people to manage it and to tweak it. So that's again, one of the things that we did and that's why we really think that we're a cool vendor in that magic, art, magic world, right? Because you, it's that simple to manage. Uh, you don't have any uh, find, you, you cannot, you don't need to fine tune it in like a bazillion different ways. Just install it, we work, 
it works, you map it to your containers, simple. So we're here at KubeCon, uh, a lot of talk about uh, cloud native, uh, a lot of projects, a lot of integration, a lot of community development. Um, you've described installing Weka into a Kubernetes cluster. Um, where, you know, are there, are there integrations that are being worked on? What are the, what, is there connective tissue between essentially this parallel file system that's spanning, you say you have five nodes, you have Weka running on those five nodes, you have a Kubernetes cluster spanning those five nodes. Um, what kinds of things are happening in the community maybe that you're supporting or that you're participating in? to connect those together. So, so right now you you don't, uh, we only have the CSI plugin. We didn't invest in, in uh, anything more. Actually, one of the reasons that I'm here is to get to know the community a bit more and to get more involved. Uh, and we're definitely looking into how more can we help customers utilize Kubernetes and, and enjoy the worker storage. Uh, do we need to do some sort of um, integration? We, I'm actually exploring that and I think you'll see some well, so we got interesting you, outputs. So we got you reason. at a good time now. Exactly. Yeah, because you can say with with it with an API approach, um, you have the you have the connectivity, and you're providing this storage layer that provides all the attributes that you described. Mm -hmm. um, but you are here live, living proof, green wristband and all, mm -hmm. showing that the future will be even more interesting. Voting on the future. Yeah. And and seeing how we can help the community and what can we do together. And actually, I'm really impressed by the, the conference. It's, it's been amazing. We've been talking about that all week, being impressed with the fact that there's, we've been hearing between 2,700 and 3,100 people here. Which is amazing. In person, yeah. of course, there's many more that are participating virtually, but they've done a great job of these green wristbands, by the way, it, we've talked about these a minute ago. Um, this, you have a red, yellow, or green option to, to tell others. Are you comfortable with contact, handshakes, hugs, et cetera? I love that the fact that I am, I'm sandwiched by two greens, but they've done a great job of making this safe, and I hope that this is a message. This is a big community. Yes. Um, the CNCF has 138,000 contributors. I hope this is a message that shows that you can do these events. We can get together in person again, because there's nothing like the hallway track. You can't replicate that on video. Exactly, just grabbing can't. people in the hallway, in the hotel, in the lobby, talking about their problems, seeing what they need, what we do. It's amazing. Right, so so give us a little bit in our last few minutes here about the go-to-market. What is the, the GTM strategy for Weka? So that's an interesting question. So being fully software defined, when we started, we, we, we thought, do we do another Me Too, another storage appliance? Even though we're storage defined, could we, would we just go to market with our own boxes? And we actually uh, decided to go differently because our market was actually the storage vendors, sorry, the server vendors. Uh, we actually decided to go and enable other um, bare metal environments, um, manufacturers to, to now create storage solutions. So we now have a great partnership with HPE, with Supermicro, with Hitachi, uh, and, and more, uh, as well with AWS, because again, being software defined, we, we can run on the cloud. We do have massive projects on the cloud. Some of the, we're all familiar with some, but I can't mention. Um, so, and we, we chose that as our go-to market because we, we are fully software defined. We don't need any specific hardware for, we just need a server with NVMEs or an instance with NVMEs, and that's it. There's no, usually when I talk about what we need as a, as, as a product, I also talk about the list of what we don't need is longer. We don't need JBoff, JBoff, servers, UPSs. We don't need all of that, RAID arrays. We just need the servers. So a lot of the server vendors actually identify that, and then when we approach them and we say, hey, this is what we can do on your bare metal, on your environment, uh, is that valuable? Of course. So, so that's mostly our go-to market. Another thing is that we chose to, to focus on the markets that we're going after. We're not another me too, we're not another storage for your home directories, even though obviously we are in some cases uh, by customers, but we're the storage where if you could shrink your wall clock time of your pipeline from two weeks to four hours, and we did, that's like 84 times faster. If you could do that, how valuable is that? That's what we do. Uh, that we see that more and more in modern enterprises. So when we started doing that, people were saying, hey, so your go-to-market is only HPC. Uh, no, All, if you look at AI, ML, life science, um, financials, and, and the list goes on, right? Modern environments are now being what HPC was a few years ago. So there's massive amounts of data. So our go-to-market is to be very targeted. 
toward uh, these markets. A and then we can say that they also uh, push us to, to other sides of the, hey, I have a worker, so I might put my VMware on it. I might put my, I do, I'll do my distributed compilation on it. It's, it's growing organically. So that's fun to see. Awesome, well, tremendous amount of growth. I love that you talked about it very clearly, simplicity, speed, and scale. I think you did a great job of articulating why Weka is not a me too. Last question, are there any upcoming webinars or events or announcements that, that folks can go to learn more about Weka? Uh, great question. Um, I didn't come with my marketing hat, but <laughs> we, we constantly have events and uh, we usually what, what we usually do, we, we talk about the markets that we go after. So for example, a while ago we were in BioIT, so we published some uh, <laughs> life science articles. Um, I need to see what's in the pipeline and definitely share it with you. Well, I know you guys are going to be at reInvent. We do. So hopefully we'll see you at reInvent. We're we'll very be in excited. supercomputing as well, if you'll be there. Fantastic, I see that on your website there. Um, I don't think we're there, but we will see you at We're reInvent. a strong believer of, of these conferences, of these communities, of being on the ground, talking with people. Obviously, if you can do it, we'll do it with Zoom, but this is priceless. Yeah. It is, there's nothing like it. Shimon, it's been great to have you on the program. Thank you so much for giving us an update on Weka, sharing what you guys are doing, how you're helping Kubernetes users, and what differentiates the technology. We appreciate all your insights and your me. energy too. Uh, it's not me, it's the product. <laughs> uh, I love it. For Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin, coming to you live from Los Angeles. This is KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, North America, 21 coverage on theCUBE, wrapping up three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We thank you for watching, we hope you stay well.